Hi, I'm Nigel Calder with Boat How To, and this is Michael Beamer from Skagit Valley College, Anacortes, Washington. And uh, we just finished the Wooden Boat Festival, it's a great show. Nigel's in town, and uh, we here at Skagit Valley College train new technicians, as many of our viewers know. Um, and Nigel has Boat How To. And so same thing, we're working on training. He's got a great online platform for those of you who can't actually come to a school like ours and learn how to fix your boat or how to become a, a marine electrician. You can do it at home from the comfy of your own couch. Right. Okay. It's some fabulous material. So they're about to release the advanced electrical, the second round of electrical. I've seen the whole first mm -hmm. setup and it's good. And, and one of the topics is Stray current corrosion. Stray current corrosion. And so I was pretty excited about this. We've been studying corrosion for you know many years. This is stray current corrosion underway. Okay, so now remember, stray current's different than galvanic. Galvanic is where we have dissimilar metals. We throw a sacrificial anode on it. It disintegrates first. And as long as you periodically replace that, you're in good shape. This is stray current. And Nigel, what does stray current corrosion mean? So it means we've got essentially a DC leak. And any piece of metal that's feeding is connected to DC positive in some way that's feeding current into the water. It has to go into the water. Finding a path back to battery negative is going to create rapid corrosion. Rapid and corrosion. Potentially catastrophic corrosion. I mean, I've seen sail drives drop off the back of a boat in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, what we've got here a prop shaft with riddled with uh, stray current corrosion. And we must have had the propeller on here. You can see where it ended. Yeah. So there's no water in here because no. the propeller's tight. And then we get this has to have been in the water, and then we're assuming there's a strut here with a cutlass bearing. Yep, so we got a rubber. Yep, so now uh, the strut is probably bronze, and, uh, and then we get into the water again. There must have been a long run up into the hull, and then we've got the shaft seal, so then the, we're out of the water again. So the entire prop shaft, everywhere where it's in, the, in contact with the water, had to have been feeding positive current into the water and most likely to the strut because there's it's hard to see where there would be yeah. another part of the ground. Well, and underway, that's the thing. The, yes. There is no, you're not plugged into the grid. Yes. You're, so yeah. this, and this is the only, the closest proximity. Right. So, so then the strut has the rubber bearing. So there's no electrical path directly from the shaft to the strut. So it has to go through the water to get there. And then the strut itself must have been bonded inside the boat back to battery back negative. To Otherwise we wouldn't have had the path. Wouldn't have had the to path. Battery negative. Yeah. yeah. So the story on this thing was they did a big refit. They added a high output second alternator uh, to, the, we, to the uh, diesel motor. We recommend, about, yeah, nice yeah, system. Yeah. And uh, the original alternator was just charging the start battery. And you, <clears throat> we surmised that it was probably an isolated alternator or something. Mm -hmm. There had to have been a ground missing somewhere because salt water leaked onto the alternator and somewhere on the way to Alaska, right away I think it was leaking onto mm -hmm. the, um, the alternator and that provided an energy source, positive power, to the engine block, transmission, and to the shaft. You know what? I, I think I may know what happened. Have solved yeah. the problem? Well, yeah. I, As we talk these things all through... All of the, uh, the battery negatives should be tied together to the common ground point on the boat. Should be, according yeah. to ABYC, which yeah. is what you and I both right. teach, right, if and recommend. The, if the cranking battery was not tied to the common ground point, but the strut was through the bonding conductors, okay. Then we've got a path, because we've got a path to the engine block from the alternator, down the shaft, into the water, up the strut, and back to the house battery, because the alternator's tied to the house to battery, the house so battery. that's the path to ground. And we've got this and loop. There's, and there's no connection between the house negative and the cranking negative. Right. And that would have yeah. solved their problem. And that would have, yeah. That well, right there, that would, would have, have solved it. the entire problem. If we had the proper ground, the alternator would then technically be shorting yeah. out. Yeah and they would have known to replace the alternator probably. Yep. So it's it's super fascinating. We love this stuff where the positive charge that we get on here, you know, and you start stripping these electrons out and you can destroy in weeks stainless steel mm -hmm. um, or aluminum or it doesn't matter, any particular metal. Yeah. And so, yeah, so on the way to Alaska, the boat was like seven and a half knots and the captain said by the time they got to Southeast Alaska, 750 miles away, five knots, five and a half, mm -hmm. Diver looked and said, haul this boat, 
and this is what they saw. Well, plus the propeller. Yeah, the tips of the propeller yeah. was all starting to disintegrate. Which is why they're losing speed. Why they're losing yeah. all their boat yep. speed. And so, in order to avoid this, as a boat owner, check your grounds. Take a class yeah. from me, from Nigel, get your multimeter out. You know, ABYC, mm -hmm. we've got a, all of our grounds, you've got your AC grounding, your DC negatives to all battery banks. Mm -hmm. You've got your RF ground for electronics, your lightning grounds, mm -hmm. like these need to come to a common point. If you keep all of your grounds tied together, zero volts here, you can avoid this. And the uh, path for any leakage current is within the wiring in the bowl. We set it yeah. through the water. We set it through the water. So. And it's worth saying again that it doesn't matter how many uh, sacrificial anodes you have on the boat, it, yeah. it won't have any impact at all. Right, you've so. done experiments. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, you can eat up a chunk of bronze that's wired to, uh, with the negative is wired to a zinc or aluminum anode and the bronze gets eaten up. And the anode's the fine. Positive positive. Whatever, you, whatever gets that positive, yeah. Yeah. charge. There are, you know, we do have a few isolated ground systems. They're not recognized by the ABYC, but we see them on metal boats and so on. Especially they require, aluminum. If I had an aluminum boat, I would have an isolated ground on my engine. Well, they require really special insulations because then there are all kinds of issues. If, a, if, a, if there's a short from the AC system and an isolated ground, DC system, where, where's the fault path? It's through your body if you Through your it. body, yeah, which yeah, so, is not good. So uh, they, they do require expert insulation and somebody that knows what they're doing. And we're actually rewriting some of the bits of the ABYC standard right now. To which is good. Shout out to ABYC, Nigel's part of the team. They are always updating and creating, yeah. you know, making sure these standards are up to date so that our boats are safe. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's what we want. Boats yep. that are put together well, that are safe, because at the end of the day, we just actually like to go out and go sailing. Yeah. Turns out. Well, you know, it's nice to have a few problems because it gives you something to fix. It does. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, thanks right. everyone for watching. Check yeah. out Boat How To, or if you want to come get hands on and become a marine electrician, come see us at Sketch Valley College. All right. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Nigel.